Hello, yoga family. Welcome to my channel, the best place to practice yoga for your body, your mind, and your soul. Today's asana class aims to help us feel both calm and centered. And the fun part about it is we'll be using our blocks for the duration of the practice. Now you don't need blocks to practice, but if you have to, I highly recommend you have them nearby to leverage. I also am going to recommend that you have a strap nearby to sweeten the experience and anything else that's going to help create a calm, centered environment. Now I'm filming this class midday, it's 2 p.m. my time, and I am so thankful to be joining you on the mat because I'm feeling pretty lethargic after a full morning of efforting and having just eaten lunch. So I'm excited to feel rejuvenated after this practice. All right, so if you're new here, definitely subscribe for at home free holistic yoga and let's start in upright seated posture. I'm sitting atop my block and if you've got a block, I'm gonna recommend that you do the same. You can be in a cross-legged posture like I am or in Virasana Hero's Pose. <sighs> let's begin to settle in together. Send the roots earthward and the crown skyward. I recently heard that cue from Annie Carpenter and I knew immediately that I had to reuse it here. So roots earthward, crown skyward, feel the spine naturally aligning. If you know the chakra system, you can visualize them stacking atop one another. Let the lower half of the body feel strong, stable, and secure. Sides of the waist lengthening, collarbone spreading, back of the neck extending. Gently swallow, eyes softly closed or gazing ahead. And we'll open with box breathing, inhaling for a count of four, holding at the top for a count of four, exhaling for a count of four, holding at the bottom for a count of four to create a box with our breath. So exhale completely through the mouth. <sighs> Inhale through the nostrils. One, two, three, four. Hold. One, two, three, four. Exhale. Four, three, two, one, hold, four, three, two, one, inhale, one, two, three, four, hold, one, two, three, four, exhale, four, three, two, one, hold, four, three, two, one, inhaling for one, two, three, and four, hold, one, two, three, four, exhaling, four, three, two, one, holding, four, three, two, one. Please continue like this, breathing in this box-like pattern, extending and expanding your breath as much as possible on both the inhale and the exhale and effortlessly holding at the top and at the bottom of the breath for that count of four. We'll continue here for one to two more minutes together.
Last round. At the bottom of that round, breathe naturally, breathe normally. <sighs> Maybe take a recentering breath like I just did. And you'll meet me in a standing posture towards the top of the mat. Bring two blocks along with you and place them on the tallest setting at a shoulder width distance. Bring the fingertips to connect with the blocks. Feet are hip width distance or wider. And we'll simply lift up halfway, bend the knees, lengthen from tailbone to crown, feel the sides of the waist lengthening as well. Navel pulling up, lower ribs reaching down towards the top of the pelvis and exhale, fold. Head and neck hang heavy, jaw relaxes whole sole of the foot supporting you here and then inhale lift up Ardha Uttanasana exhale fold Uttanasana inhale exhale Two more. Last time. This time stay down. Walk the blocks closer towards the feet if you're using them. Otherwise, let the hands hang in a ragdoll-like shape. You can clasp both elbows if you're letting your hands hang. But if you have the blocks, bring the forearms and the elbows to rest on the tallest setting and bend your legs as much as you need to to let the chest Softly rest atop the thighs here. Let the head and neck hang oh so heavy. Jaw relaxing. Tongue floating freely. Gently swallow. Using the inhale to inflate the low back region. We're here for another minute. Make any adjustments to feel supported here. Make any adjustments to create that grounding sensation beneath you so that the torso and the whole upper body can release. Last two breaths. And slowly lift the gaze, release the hands if you had that clasp in a ragdoll hang position. Lift back up halfway, pressing into the blocks, maybe the shins. And we're gonna step back into Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. If you've got the block, I want you to place it right between the brows at the third eye center. And the top of the block is connecting with the hairline. Knees are bent here in downward facing dog. You want the hands forward of your blocks block, excuse me, 
and settle in. Use all 10 fingers, press down through the core of the hands, firm the forearms, allow the block to support you here. Lengthen back through the sacrum. Breathing steadily, rhythmically. Using this practice to reconnect, to recenter, to recalibrate your body, your mind, and soul so you can step off the mat feeling completely refreshed. Last three breaths. Final inhale together. Exhale, soften the knees, preparing for Balasana Child's Pose. Invitation to use the block underneath the forehead again. You can also stack two blocks here. Whatever feels best for you and your body in this season of living. Elbows can bend. No need to fully effort in Child's Pose if it feels better to bend the elbows wide. Soften. That word soften, it's something I'm exploring in my own life and noticing and discovering how when I make time to soften, whether it be through my yoga practice, on the mat, a walk outdoors, so yoga off the mat, I'm noticing that that softness is opening a doorway to strength and structure and stability. So the more I soften, the more receptive I can be, I'm experiencing greater empowerment, focus, and clarity in other areas of my life. And it's this beautiful interplay. This is a softening practice here. Appreciating that you pressed play today and made space for this type of practice. Last breath. Let's take a collective inhale followed by a collective sigh. Beautiful. Coming to an upright posture, transitioning to the side of the mat. Again, if you have those blocks, they're coming with you. You'll stack them in front and bring the feet as wide as is comfortable for you for a forward fold here. Pinky borders are parallel with the front and back of the mat. Weight is in the big toes as you hinge forward and fold. Ideally, forehead connecting with the block and stacking these blocks in the best way to make that possible. If the legs are straight, please energize the kneecaps. Otherwise, slight bend in the knees here. Keeping the breath online, active, present, 
here to support your growth, your evolution. Noticing if the legs are straight, if that's too much pressure or tension, invitation to bend the knees. If the knees are bent, notice if you'd like to explore straightening them. Last three breaths here. Drive the fingertips into the earth plane, lift up halfway, lengthen from tail through crown, and take a moment, come into Skandasana, deeply bent into the right knee, flex the left foot. Mm, that inner thigh, she's talking to me. Crawling over towards the left knee, bringing that into a deep bend, flexing through the right toes. This inner thigh is also talking to me. <sighs> Beautiful. Come back through center and then placing a block on a medium setting. Maybe you keep them both stacked. Heel toe the feet towards one another. Meet me in Malasana Yogi squat, sitting atop a block. Bring the hands into prayer position, elbows to the interior of the knees to help lengthen through the sternum, spread through the collarbone. Use the force of the elbows to send the knees wider as you continue to extend up through the crown. Close those eyes down or softly gaze ahead. Come back to your breath. Feeling so thankful for this practice, for these teachings, for the yogis who codify them into a system for us to benefit from, to leverage as a growth tool both on and off our mats, and that we said yes, we unrolled that mat today, we stepped atop it, and we are here taking care of ourselves holistically, body, mind, and soul. Feeling so grateful for that in this moment. Knowing that we, you and I, have this powerful toolkit to return back to homeostasis, back to the core of who we are, back to what really matters when the world starts to get dizzying and confusing and overwhelming. We have a toolkit to lean upon. Last breath here with me and each other. Sigh. Beautiful. Okay, take a moment to lift those hips high. Bicycle the legs a bit, shimmy out any tension, and we'll meet in a seat coming into a forward fold. If you've got a blanket, place it towards the back of the mat, and this is where we'll introduce our strap to sweeten the experience. The strap, we want it in a tight loop to bring 
our legs through and create resistance for the thighs to create this feeling of containment. And then extend the heels, knees will be bent, place one block underneath each knee. We wanna be on the edge of our blanket here. You'll need to probably play with the positioning of the strap. Send the fingertips down into the earth plane, lengthen through the spine, reach the fingertips high. Fold the torso over the tops of the thighs here, folding over the tops of the thighs. Clasping the pinky edge side of the foot, bending at the elbows, let the head and the neck hang heavy. And we'll be here for a few minutes. Allowing the props that we're using to support us in relaxing and feeling held. Another minute together. Last three breaths. With care, return to an upright posture. Aligning the shoulders back over the hips. Remove the blocks out to the side. If you had that strap, shimmy it down and away from you. And let's all take a windshield wiper from side to side with the legs, fingertips behind you. Moving as slow or as fast, depending on what feels good for you. And then lying all the way down onto your back for restorative bridge pose. Placing a block underneath the sacrum. If you don't have a block, you can take the knees as wide as the mat and let them knock in towards one another for constructive rest pose or Ardha Shavasana. Hands down by your side, palms flipped up towards the sky, allow the chest to expand. Again, reconnecting with the earth plane, the props that you're using and giving yourself permission to be held here. 
to tap into the experience of containment that we're cultivating together. Final breath, inhale through the nose, sigh out the mouth, beautiful, press down through the soles of the feet to remove the block, coming into a supine twist, if you have the block, place it between the thighs here, let the legs fall over towards the left, Right arm extends out, or it can be in a goal post position. Noticing the change that you're feeling from before we started this practice. The difference in your energy. The difference in your mental, emotional body. The difference for you physically. Switching sides, gently engage the core to bring the legs back through neutral. Shift the hips to the left as the legs fall over to the right this time. Arm extends out. Straight from the shoulder socket or in a goal pose position, you choose. When we feel nourished physically, energetically, mentally, and emotionally, it opens the doorways to these higher planes of existence, those being discernment, intuition, imagination, sustained concentration, enjoyment, presence, bliss, our wisdom and bliss bodies, the Vignanamaya Kosha and the Anandamaya Kosha, they're able to come online when we take care of the other layers, the other sheaths. Last breath together. Beautiful. Coming back through to center. Again, if you have the blocks, placing them under both knees as we settle into our final resting pose here together creating a bolster-like experience with the blocks underneath the knees here, feet as wide as the mat, toes splayed out, heels drawing in, palms resting down by your sides, open towards the sky in an act of receiving, receiving 
those higher planes of existence or those more subtler bodies that exist within our wisdom body and our bliss body. As you settle in, breathe into the core of the chest. Simply notice the expansion and the contraction of the chest. The rib cage and the belly inflating and deflating, rising and falling. And maybe it feels best to place one hand on the belly, one hand on the heart to really connect with that. Three final breaths here together. This last one, hold the breath at the top, please. Hold, hold. Hold, exhale with a sigh. <sighs> Begin to roll onto one side. Bottom arm acts as a pillow. And I want you to identify how you will use your time after this practice now that you've softened, now that you've created body, mind, soul coherence. What's a heart-centered action that you can take imperfectly to the best of your ability? Slowly make your way to an upright seat. Resting atop a block if you're using one today. Sweep those arms out to the side. Gather up this wholeness that we've cultivated. Palms touch, hug them down through heart center. Borders of the thumb connect into the chest. Lift through the sternum, spread through the collarbone. Inhale for OM. Oh. Om Shanti 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 Om Peace 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 Beginning to open your eyes, returning to the physical space, this physical moment. Thank you so much for joining me. I thoroughly appreciate your company as I recalibrate for the rest of my day that lies ahead of me. And I'd love to know in the comments, 
what will you pursue now that you've created this state of coherence, right? Now that you've pulled together all the parts and pieces that make up who you are and you've brought them into wholeness, what will you now go pursue imperfectly? Tell me in the comments. I definitely want to read it. And if you enjoy practicing holistically, combining asana, affirmations, mudras, off the mat journaling questions, and of course the chakra system, which is one of my favorite toolkits to leverage, get my yoga reset guide. You can find the description, the link in the description below. I'll meet you back here as always to keep practicing yoga holistically. Whew, I am like high on relaxation. Ah, feels good.